What is going on guys? Levi Adams here with Team TC and there are 809 Pokemon in the Pokemon franchise. Every single one of them is someone's favorite so I wanted to ask the question, can we use them in the TCG? Today we're going to be continuing our look at every single fully evolved Pokemon and how they stack up in the Pokemon TCG standard and expanded metagames. Welcome back to Dex Dex. What is going on guys? We are back with another episode of Dex Dex. Today, continuing our look with Arbok and a very low resolution picture of Ekans. Now, Arbok is kind of interesting, being the fact that it's a poison type, usually what it has to do, like its effects have to do something with poison, but we got a very interesting card actually released in the newest expansion or rather mini set for the TCG from Hidden Fates. This Arbok, aside from having amazing art referencing Jesse from the Pokemon anime slash the video games, uh, if you played Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, has a very unique ability as well as a pretty neat attack. Its ability, if this Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, discard two random cards from your opponent's hand. Automatically, really, really good. The fact that it's two random cards can really add to disruption factor. Your opponent doesn't get to choose them, so it's sort of up to you, but you don't get a look, so. It could be better, but it's also just very, very nice. Say you discard some draw supporters they were gonna use for next turn, whatever it may be. With its attack Rocket Tail for a psychic and two colorless energy, this attack does 50 damage, very mediocre given the attack cost, but if Jesse and James is in your discard pile, this attack does 80 more damage. Jesse and James is a supporter card that also came out in the Hidden Fates expansion. Kim, pardon my squeaky chair. But this means that you're going to be hitting 130 damage. 130 is really, really awesome as a number to hit against non-GX Pokemon. There aren't really a lot of Pokemon that survive that hit. Think things like Giratina, Zapdos, or Volcanion, probably three of the most relevant non-GX attackers. They all have 110 HP, and Giratina actually has 130. And Giratina is one of the few psychic Pokemon that, since it's a ghost type in the video games, it's actually weak to dark in the TCG. So, Arbok wouldn't be hitting it for weakness, so the fact that you max out at 130 is actually pretty nice. Now, not only that, you're a Psychic-type Pokemon, which means you have a, quite a few little tricks for you, probably the most relevant being your access to Mysterious Treasure as Reliable Search. As I've mentioned in other episodes of Dex Dex, having Reliable Search is always good. Not only that, you're going to be hitting for weakness against the ever-relevant Mewtwo and Mew GX, prominent tag team that did win the Pokemon World Championships this year, 2019. And hitting that for weakness is amazing. Unfortunately, you're just shy of a knockout, uh, seeing that as you would hit 260 after weakness and Mew Mew has seven, or 270, but we have ways of playing around that. Now, going into the card, it has very obvious synergy with both Weezing and Jesse and James, which were also released in Hidden Fates. Weezing, uh, Weezing reads that once during your turn, if this card is discarded with the effect of Jesse and James, you may have your opponent discard a card from their hand. They discard the card after the effect of Jesse and James. So, and Jesse and James reads each player discards two cards from their hand, your opponent discards first. So, Essentially, you're just knocking your opponent's hand down to zero. Really, really cool, really, really fun for disruption. Just when they think that they get their hand size back up, you use Weezing and Jesse and James, or Arbok gets knocked out and then their hand gets knocked back down to zero. The only bummer part about Ar Arbok is that it does discard before your opponent takes their prizes, so they will end up with at least one prize card uh, in their hand, so one card in their hand, but that doesn't mean you just can't Jesse and James next turn. So needless to say, because of these three cards, our deck is going to revolve around these cards and Arbok as the main focus. So looking at our list here, we're going to be playing a Jirachi build, of course, just because 
in a deck where we need to search out a specific supporter where we need to set up a Pokemon as quick as possible and just needs to need to get things rocking and rolling as quick as we can Jirachi is one of the best ways to do so with its amazing ability we're playing three copies of Jirachi, one Ditto Prism Star, as well as a 2-2 Malamar line in addition to our 4-4 Arbok line and our two Weezing. I would want to play four Weezing, but I was just finding that we're actually not using Jesse and James as much as I wish we were. We're probably using it like once a game, maybe two times a game at most, just for a little additional disruption. But it's not the most relevant thing in the world. Most of the time you are going to be using cards like Cynthia or Lily to try and set up your board state and advance your position as much as possible. Of course, four copies of Mysterious Treasure for reliable search of everything other than Jirachi and Ditto. Uh, Malamar, of course, I don't believe I mentioned this, is there for energy acceleration. Now, going into our trainer cards, we're playing four copies of Pokegear. This helps us get our supporters in hand as quickly as possible, in addition to using Jirachi to help search them out. Three copies of Pokemon Communication, as well as four copies of Switch, and three copies of a Skateboard. This just helps our Jirachi strategy move as fluidly as... Uh, fluidly? As smoothly as possible. Let's say smoothly. Smoothly as possible. This... Of course, since we do have Weezing in the deck, which is a dead card unless we're using Jesse and James to discard it, we can actually just Pokemon Communication our Weezings away and search out something like Jirachi or Malamar or Arbok, literally anything that we may need in that moment. So Weezing is very nice in that regard. Two Shrine of Punishment and one Viridian Forest. You could opt for three Shrine of Punishment. I actually don't have three on PTCGO, but I also found myself wanting one Viridian Forest just for that little bit of extra energy acceleration, getting energy into hand and always discarding something is very, very nice. Since we're not using Jesse and James, the way we get it into the discard pile to boost our Arbox attack is typically through discarding either through Mysterious Treasure or Viridian Forest. So just a nice bonus there. And as for the rest of our supporters, we're playing four Cynthia, three Jesse and James, two Lily, one Lieutenant Surge, and one Professor Elms Lecture. Professor Elms helps get all of our basics up and running just as smoothly as possible. Lieutenant Surge helps make it so that we can pull Jesse and James off more often, or even just get off two draw supporters in one turn. And two Lily and four Cynthia, I feel, is a nice split between the two. Lily is more often than not a dead card in this deck. I really wish it wasn't, but Lily has just kind of gotten a lot worse since Ultra Ball has rotated out. As for our energy count, we're playing three copies of Triple Acceleration Energy and seven copies of Psychic Energy. Our Psychic Energy count is low, but since we're going to be accelerating energy from the discard pile with Malamar. It really doesn't matter too, too much. And of course, triple acceleration energy is there to just uh, kind of make it so that we're not super reliant on Malamar. Of course, you could always opt to go for a thicker Malamar line and just kind of exclude the triple acceleration energy perfectly up to you. So how do I rate this deck? I gotta give it a one out of seven in viability and a two out of seven in enjoyment. Uh, it's really, really cool. I think it's very fun in the TCG when they make supporter cards and they make Pokemon cards that correspond with the supporters due to their relation to that Pokemon in the anime or the video games. Jesse and James being a very perfect example, synergizing well with Arbok and Weezing, their Gen 1 partners. So I think it's super duper cool. Beyond that, it really doesn't have too much going for it. Arbok is kind of a weak Pokemon, and its attack is nice, don't get me wrong, doing 130 damage is good, you're doing it for 3 energy, a lot of Pokemon do that, Giratina does it, but the problem with Arbok is that it's reliant on having Jesse and James in the discard pile, you can't revive yourself like Giratina can, and also Giratina is a basic Pokemon, Arbok is a stage 1, you're relying on Malamar, you're relying on setting up two stage ones, and that's never really that good. And not to mention the discard effect, while it can be handy, isn't the best thing in the world. It's interesting, um, but it doesn't really break the game, if that makes any sense. 
Weezing in combination with Jesse and James got Jesse and James banned in the expanded format, so we couldn't even use this combo in expanded if we wanted to. But Arbok definitely doesn't contribute to that whatsoever. I think the fact that you're hitting 132 is a big bummer because that means you boost up to 260 after weakness, and while that does knock out things like Deoxys and Espeon, you are missing the KO on Mew Mewtwo, and while Shrine of Punishment can help with that, it's just if they do any sort of healing or if you don't find your shrines in time, then you're in a little bit of trouble, or even worse, if you just can't get to your, your Jesse and James in the discard pile, it's just a little rough. Not to mention the fact that you're relying on Jesse and James to boost your damage. If you're not using the card, it's kind of hard to get in the discard pile, I'm not gonna lie. But all this being said, I can show you how this deck runs and operates. So let's go ahead and get into the games and I can show you just how the strategy works. Alrighty, getting into the game here, we are going to be playing our Arbok deck against a Mew Mewtwo Tag Team GX deck. Funny enough, after talking about it during our deck analysis, we start off with our Jirachi, which is absolutely wonderful. A Mysterious Treasure in hand lets us get an Inkei up and running, as well as a Turn 1 Lily for five brand new cards is amazing. We draw into another Mysterious Treasure. We are able to discard two Psychic Energy this turn, which is absolutely lovely. Using our Jirachi to get a Pokemon Communication off the top, and our opponent's going to start doing their Mew Mewtwo thing, getting Pokemon in the discard pile that they want in the discard pile, of course. And they're just going to opt for the GXs that will be most useful to them. They're going to Welder to their Mew Mewtwo, which is perfectly fine by me. We're just going to keep on setting up how we are like we know how to and we are going to set up a Malamar as well as an Arbok onto the bench using our opponent's giant hearth to discard Jesse and James just not searching for any energy of course because we're not playing fire energy but taking advantage of that stadium card all the same we can go ahead and grab Pokegear off the top here with Jirachi and use Pokegear to get Professor Elm's Lecture. Use this Jirachi to get a Shrine of Punishment. This is going to put all of the Mew Mewtwo's on the board in range of a two-hit KO from our Arbox Rocket Tail attack. Very, very important for the rest of the game. Even just that one Shrine puts us in a much better position than if we did not have it at all, which is very, very nice. Our opponent is going to be able to take a knockout on our Jirachi here. Perfectly fine by me though. We draw into a Professor Elm's Lecture and I'm just kind of trying to see what we can hit here. We're able to get a Mysterious Treasure which lets us get a second Arbok on the board. We're going to use this Elm's Lecture to get another Ekans as well as an Inkay down on the bench. We're just trying to set up our board as best as possible. We retreat into our Arbok and attach the Triple Acceleration Energy, dealing a nice 130 damage to our opponent's Mew Mewtwo. Would be 260, but unfortunately our opponent has the Jirachi GX, which removes its Psychic Weakness and makes me a sad boy. Fortunately though, we do have another Arbok that is ready and raring to go on the bench here. We are going to be able to charge it up as well as start charging up our Ekans on the bench to eventually evolve into another Arbok, which is very, very nice. Our opponent does ha and doesn't have any energy attached to the board elsewhere other than their active, where they committed six energy to. Kind of a bad move in my personal opinion, but what do I know? I'm not playing their deck. And we are able to take a knockout on a Mew 2 and Mew. Our opponent's going to be able to discard a Verizion GX here and go for the Iron Rule GX, stopping us from attacking. Perfectly fine though, as we do have a Jirachi on the board, we're just going to be able to use this turn to accelerate a little bit. We're going to end up using our Jesse and James to discard three cards from their hand, since we did have a Weezing in hand. Very, very nice, just a little bit of synergy there. And we're going to go ahead and pass turn. I'm not really worried if our Jirachi gets knocked out. I don't think our opponent will be able to do anything having a two card, card hand after the draw. So we are in a phenomenal position. We get another Malamar set up, use Viridian Forest to search out some energy. We're just rocking and rolling and living our best life here. 
One more attack is going to go ahead and win us the game unless our opponent opts to retreat. Don't know why they would. They don't really have a second attacker on board. They are going to be able to take a knockout on our Arbok, but it does not matter because we'll just revenge them and that is the game. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode on Arbok. Next episode, we are going to be tackling the mascot of the franchise in Pikachu. So excited about that, Pikachu being one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, as I'm sure it is for many other people. So definitely look forward to that episode. Until then, my name is Levi Adams with Team TC, and I'll catch you guys next time. Hey everyone, this is Ash Ketchum. Thanks for watching Team TC. Make sure to subscribe and become part of the team and join us on our journey to become Pokemon Masters. Ha <laughs> ha!